Amen. Good morning, St. Elmo Missionary Baptist Church. Come on and give God some praise. Those that's in here and those that's watching, I know you can do better than that. Come on, I want everybody in here. If you can stand, come on and give Jesus a standing ovation. Amen. Amen. We can stand when we go to the basketball games. We can stand when we go to the football games. We can go to the graduations. But when we come to the house of the Lord, we ought to be able to stand and give none other than Jesus Christ of Nazareth a standing ovation. You know why? Because he made it possible for you to play basketball. He made it possible for you to play football. He made it possible for you to play any sports. And then not only that, but he gave you the ability to, to do that. And then he gave you the voice to be able to shout and, and scream down the, down the, at, out there at the players and all of that. And not only that, but he's your creator. He's your master. You ought to be able to stand and give him some praise. If you can go anywhere else and give anybody else standing ovation, why can't you give God standing ovation? Now put your hands together and give it a most loud Shabbat. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. You are worthy this morning. You're worthy to be praised, God. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah to your name, God. Glory to the Most High God. Glory to Alpha and Omega. Glory to Mary's little baby. Glory! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I don't know about you, but I'm not ashamed to give God the praise. I'm not ashamed to dance for the Lord. I'm not ashamed to clap my hand. I'm not ashamed to stomp my feet because he's been too good to me. Now give him another hand of clap. Give him some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Bless your name, Master. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. You're worthy of all praises. We thank you. You may be seated if you can. We thank you. Oh, how much we praise your name. Oh, how our hearts just lift you up, Jesus. No other name that we know whereby men must be saved. None other than the precious and sweet and glorious name of Jesus. Ain't his name so sweet just to say his name. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. Now say it like you mean it. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. If it was not for him on my side, where would I be? Where would you be? You wouldn't have woke up this morning if it was not for the Lord. You wouldn't have woke up this morning if he hadn't touched you with his finger of love and you opened your eyes to see another day that was not promised. You would not be here if it was not for him. You could be dead, sleeping in your grave, but thank God he made death behave this morning. Give him another hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. God is a good God. And somebody said all the time, God is good. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I get crazy for the Lord. I don't know about you, but I love the Lord. Why? Not only because he heard my cry, but because of who he is and what he has done for me. He has brought me a mighty long way. And I know he's brought you a mighty long way. I know he's watched over you all this week and kept you safe from hurt, harm, or danger. And then you can look at the news and you can look on the radio and listen on the radio and hear all the things that's going on in this world. But yet he kept you safe. And that's something to shout about. That's something to tell him, thank you, Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, thank you. Tell him, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why? Because he's worthy now. He's worthy to be praised. And I thank him each and every morning when I rise to see another day that was not promised. I thank him each and every morning when I get up and when my feet hit the ground. Hallelujah. I get on all of my knees and I say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Another day is here. Hallelujah. You watched over me when I couldn't watch over myself. And I thank you, Lord. Why? Because you are good. 
Why? Because you know how to take care of what belongs to you. So we thank you. We invite you, amen, to continue to visit with us on Sunday mornings. We thank you for wherever you're located at, those down in, in the south, amen, in Colleen, amen. Thank you. Thank you for what you do. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for joining in with us to, to uplift and magnify none other than Jesus the Christ, the superstar. Thank you. Thank you for those that's in California, those out there in California, my son, I thank you out there and all my children, amen, my wife and my mother, amen, wherever you're sitting watching from. Thank you for joining in with us because God is good and all the time God is good. I want to thank all of those in Chicago and, 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 and how you join in with us on Tuesday nights and how you join in with us on Thursdays. Amen. It's a blessing. Amen. Believe me, I appreciate you joining in with us. We are, listen, regardless of what denomination we are, regardless of what church we go to, we are one big family Amen. when it comes to Jesus Christ. Amen. We are all brothers and sisters. Amen. Wherever you are located. And that's the one thing I like about God. God has many colors. Many. And you know one thing about it? He loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. That if you just believe in him, he said you would never perish but have ever everlasting life. And I don't know about you, but everlasting just blows my mind because that's when time shall be no more. And I don't know about you, but I, I just, I got to run on just to see what the end's going to be. And if you ain't been running, then you need to be starting running, amen. Because time is winding up. You know, and I heard somebody say, God is trying to tell us something. Listen to me. God done already told us something. He ain't trying to tell us. He done already told us. We just got to listen. We just got to put our ears and listen. And, and we just got to listen and see what's going on in this world. Because he done already told us. He already have spoken. And he said it right now at the right hand of the Father. Right? Making intercessions. For you and for me. Ain't that a one, ain't that a blessing? That every time you stumble, he blots it out. Ain't that a blessing? That every time you make a mistake, that he don't remember it no more. Oh, good God Almighty. Hallelujah. That's a good God. That's a God that truly, truly loves you. And we thank God for you. That you allow us little old Saint Elmo to come in and, and, and to visit with you and to speak a spoken word which is the gospel speak a word which is the spreaded spoken word of the gospel that some woman some man some young boy some young girl might come to be saved that's what we're here about is to come to know who Jesus is in this life so that we'll have another life with him for eternity. That's what it's about. It's about us seek that he came to seek and save that which was lost. Because you hear Charles play all the time, I was blind. And a lot of you are blind. Now I'm not talking to the ones that can see. I'm talking to those that are blind. Because we was all once blind now. But a lot of us now see. And so we thank God that we can see. And I'm talking about seeing with your physical eyes. Need. I'm talking about seeing with your spiritual eyes. So we thank God. Amen for all of you. We want to thank God for TJ being in the house with us today. Amen. TJ is here with us. Amen. Come on and give God some praise. Amen. Still following his career in basketball, amen. And we just believe that one day he's going to make the NBA. Come on and give God some praise. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We're going to call those things that be not as though they were. We're going to speak it and, 
And we're going to claim it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I tell you, if you put your trust in him, TJ, you can't go wrong with who you use. So keep your hands in him. Because success is nothing without the Lord. So keep your hand in him. Stay before him night and day. Let him know you love him, even though he already knows. But show him you love him. Let everybody know you stand for the Lord, and for the Lord you will die. In the name of Jesus. Well, we thank God for all of you again. As we get ready to hear the choirs, they get ready to sing. Amen. Led by none other than Pat and Pastor Charles Ellington. So as we come on, let's give God as they come forth. Amen. And if you know it, y'all can sing along with us. Every praise, every praise to our God. Here we go. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship. Yeah. 
Yes, everybody said, clap your hands. song that you can praise God in the middle of it. Y'all yeah. heard that song. Yes, I, I, yes. Know, I know we didn't practice yeah. that song, but yeah. it just keeps yeah. ringing yeah. in the Come middle on. of it. Yeah. And the good thing about the middle of it is you're not at the beginning of it. <laughs> so you started somewhere, <laughs> but you can praise him in the middle of it. Tear running down your face. And my heart feel like it's gonna break And your earth feel like it's gonna shake And you have taken all that you can take Just remember where your help come from Realizing you got somewhere to run Don't worry about what you're going through Instead of worrying what you can do You can pray the end In the middle of, yeah, shoot, shoot, in the middle, oh, love, in the 
Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm sad. I praise you. I praise you. It all that I go through. Because pray is what I, I do. <laughs> hey. Cause I owe it, I owe it all, owe it all. Owe it all. Cause 
praise is what I do. Praise is what I, I praise is what I praise is what I I'm through. I'm through. Kevin. Do. Come on, let's give. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Yeah, praise is what we do. Hallelujah. Because we owe it all to him. We owe it all to the Lord. And listen, ain't no harm in praising God. Because he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy of all your praises hallelujah we want to thank god amen for the choir and those selection they gave us amen we thank god for for the lord being in our presence today truly he is in this place amen i don't know about you but i, I can feel him amen not only deep down inside but i can feel him changing the atmosphere he is in this place and I hope you're wherever you are at, amen, that he's right where you are at as well. So we thank God, amen, for, the, for those selections, amen. We thank God for you joining in with us. There is a word on today. Again, we thank God and, and um, just want to let you know just before we get started, we want to thank all of you for watching and amen, all the all your giving that you have been doing. Again, we, we had a side plate that we did in here, amen, two to three dollars, amen, to ask to help free the cost to go to the nationals, amen, amen, and we're asking you that if you can, amen, give whatever you can from your heart, whatever you can give, amen, we thank you, amen, and if you bring, if you send it in or mail it in, amen, just put down national trip, amen, and all we ask is two or three dollars, but whatever the Lord put on your heart, Amen. We're asking. But we thank God again for you joining in with us. Thank God for all your prayers. Amen. We thank God for what we just heard. And, and we're getting ready for the word of God. Amen. So I hope you brought your Bible with you. Amen. Come on and give God another hand clap. Thank you, Charles. Amen. 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 Let us... Uh, Go to our word, amen. Amen, and we're going to go to the book of Matthew. Amen, the 14th chapter, 25th through the 33rd verse. And then we're going to go ahead and release the children to go to children's church. Hey, Charlie, you can just give a little something while they make their way into children's church at this time. Amen. Pastor. You can give us a little bit while they make their way to children's church. <laughs> amen. And while they're doing that, amen. Let us, let us, let us look at our scripture and go to Matthew, the 14th chapter. God loves the little children. Amen. So we thank God. Amen. All our little children. We got quite a few today. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For all the little children. Amen. Amen. Let us open our Bibles to the book of Matthew, the 14th chapter, 25th through the 33rd verse. Matthew, the 14th chapter, 25th through the 33rd verse. Give you time enough to find it, and, and I want to thank uh, Thank all of you, amen. I 
that's here in, here in St. Elmo, those that's watching. Amen. We're still on the theme, looking for a way out this year. Amen. And I don't know if you haven't heard it, but the COVID is still, still running rampant. And it is not over. And so we have members here who has already been quarantined, and we thank God, but they're doing fine. And I want to ask that you continue to pray for them. And there are so many people nowadays looking for a way out, not only just the COVID, but out of an addiction situation, out of child abuse, out of spouse abuse, Trying to find ways out of homosexuality. There's so many things in this world that the devil has offered many of our young folks and many of our people that they've gotten themselves in. Now they're looking for a way out. And so that's why it's important that the thing that we're on is looking for a way out. Let us go. If we are there, say amen. If you're still looking, say wait. Seem like we are all there. Again, the 14th chapter, starting with the 25th, and it, and it reads, And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight Way Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And said, and, and then Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, why, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased, then they were then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thy all, the Son of God. Let me use for a thought, those that like a thought. Sudden storms in our lives. Sudden storms in our life. You may be seated. Sudden storms. In our lives. Now the Sea of Galilee is so important. Because it was here where Jesus began his earthly ministry. And where he taught and preached the gospel. And the place where so many of his miracles were performed. If you look at the screen, if you look up here, the screen, slide one. Seems like we're having some technical problems. Anyway, slide one will show you the Sea of Galilee. When I was in Israel, we took a picture of the Sea of Galilee. And it is a freshwater lake fed by the Jordan River. Then drains to the south and flows into the Dead Sea. 
Now the Sea of Galilee is a thriving sea. It is an area of growth and life because it has a strong inlet and outlet. Unlike the Dead Sea, which has no outlet. The Dead Sea that I swam in but couldn't swim but had to float, it has no outlet. Listen, we need to be like the Sea of Galilee and be a blessing to others to sow and pour into the lives of others. The Bible said, in lowness of mind, let each, be, let each esteem others better than themselves. Philippians 2 and 3. Other names of this sea, when you start to read and start to look in your Bible, when you start to see all these different names, there's other names of the Sea of Galilee like Kinesarit, the Lake of Genesaret, Luke 5 and 1, the Sea of Tiberias, John 6 and 1, Shinnerit, Numbers 34 and 1, and the Sea of Shinneroth, Joshua 12 and 3. In Hebrew, Shinneroth means harp, which is the shape like resemblance. So the Sea of Galilee is shaped like an harp. And if I had the picture up here, I could show you how it's shaped and how it looks. Now the Sea of Galilee is surprisingly now, watch this, it's surprisingly small, measuring about 13 miles long and 7 miles wide. The Sea of Galilee is enclosed in a bowl by mountains about 690 feet below sea level. So it's enclosed now. Think about it. I want you to picture in your mind. Is picture this Sea of Galilee with mountains all around it. From the sides even to some of it at the top. And these mountains are way about 690 feet Below sea level is where the Sea of Galilee is. So they are really tall. The, the Golian Heights sits on and the Mount of Hermon Tower above the lake on the eastern shoreline at more than a thousand feet above sea level. So it sits up there real high. And on the western side of the lake, Mount Arbel. And the plains of Galilee also rise quickly to 1,000 feet above sea level. Now watch this. As a result of being in a natural bowl, weather patterns can change dramatically. Did you hear what I said? Because it's in a bowl, weather patterns can change dramatically and quickly on the water. Cold air that sweeps down from the mountains in the east converges with the warm air over the lake and causes large temperatures and air pressure to change. So imagine now, here it is, that if you was out on that lake, something can suddenly change in the twinkling of an eye. Because of the mountains, the air that's coming off of the mountains submerges around this lake and causes temperatures to change which could cause a storm to happen at any minute or at any moment. That's what happened to the disciples when they went out on the boat. The mountains that was around them caused this wind to happen but first when Jesus told them to go to the other side he let them know that Hey, you go to the other side. I'm going to go up to the mountains and pray. While they was out there, the water was calm at first. But then all of a sudden, while they got out there in the middle, this storm happens. This results in strong winds funneling through the hills and, and dropping to the sea, producing furious storms with little or no warning at all. All of a sudden, things was calm. Then the next thing you know, all hell breaking loose. I'm going somewhere. Waves 
as high as 10 feet have been recorded. So you can imagine the kind of great windstorm that caused even seasoned fishermen to be afraid. Mark 4 and 40 lets us know that. These men were seasoned. These men were great fishermen. That even when they got out there on this sea going across to the other side, and the storm comes and it even caused them to be what? Afraid. Well, we have seen the disciples encounter a tempest. In Matthew 8 and 24, winds up to 63 miles an hour to include an earthquake. And another time, as we see in scripture today, they encountered winds that were contrary and boisterous. And just as it happened to the disciples, not one time, but two times, sudden storms in our lives can happen at the drop of a hat. Preach, Pastor Cabot, preach. Just as it happened to them, they were going about their merry way doing what Jesus told them to do. To go across. Because he went up into the mountains to pray. And then all of a sudden here come this boisterous wind that now it calls them to be afraid. And family disputes can hit you at any moment. Well, you are at odds with loved ones. Oh, you don't believe me? Well, have you ever been at, at a, a gathering with your family? Everybody having a good time? And then all of a sudden, a fight break out? All of a sudden. Have you ever been there and, and your family enjoying yourself at a little get-together party and, and then you get two sisters or two brothers start to arguing and then you got to get in between them to break them up everything was going good then all of a sudden all hell break loose listen money can quickly run out leaving you struggling on how you're going to make it to the next pay period that's if you have a next pay period I don't know about you but it can All of a sudden, you got money. Boy, when the pay come in, the pay period comes, and you get a little money, and before you know it, within a few days, you you trying to look in your pocket. They're trying to find some money. You, 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 you go to your hidden place where you done hid money. It's not there. And I, and I know, and I know some, of, some of the women, they like to hide them in socks and everywhere else. But no money there. Because you don't use it. Because any minute, any moment, your money can run out just as quick as you get it. It's quick to run out. Go. You go to the gas station nowadays and fill up and you ain't got no more money after that. That's why I'll never let my car get on empty. You better fill it back up when it get half full. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Sickness can hit you when you least expect it. And if you are older, expect it to come more often. I never, never, hardly ever got sick. But when I got older, everything started going wrong. Sickness just all of a sudden happened. Next thing you know, I'm walking, then my leg about to give out. The world? You go to try to reach up there to get something out of the refrigerator, and then all of a sudden you're struggling to get it out. Arm don't want to work right. Next thing you know, you, you start eating, and then your tooth are hurting. Sickness can happen at any moment, and, and then next thing you know, something is going wrong, and then you go into the doctor, and before you know it, you got bad news. All of a sudden. And if, they, and, and if it's not happening, keep living. You young, 
and, and you young folks, let me tell you something. You're not invisible either because nowadays it's hitting you too nowadays. I never seen coming up when I was coming up, I hardly ever seen anybody at my age when we was young had cancer. Nowadays we got children that's just been born with cancer. Got a lot of young folks right now that got to have surgery already because what? Their body is not acting right. So let me tell you something. You don't have to get old to get sick. Sickness will find you. All of a sudden, am I on your street yet? Well, I guess I'm not. Anxiety attacks comes out of nowhere. You can be in a store and all of a sudden just have an attack. People think you're going crazy. You can be at a restaurant eating and all of a sudden start having an anxiety attack. Because you've been dealing with so much trouble in this world. Unexpected bills knock you on the door demanding payment or else your bank account will be garnishing you. These things happen all of a sudden in our lives. Just that it happened to them disciples out there on that boat. Everything is going good. Everything is fine. Everything is peaches and cream. And then all of a sudden, something's hit you before you know it. Something in your house all of a sudden goes out. And you don't have the money to fix it. Your car just won't start. Have you went out there, cold as it is, and try to start your car? And the car won't start and can't even move it. And it'll stop running without what? Warning. Leaving you in a state of panic as to how you're going to make it to work. And to top it off, even death of a friend or a loved one can take you by surprise. And, and I want to tell these young folks, nowadays when I was coming, you hardly ever heard the young folks die. But now they dying just like older folks. All of a sudden, things have changed. And these things can take you by surprise. You name it, if it can happen, it will all happen in a sudden. If it's not one thing, oh, good God Almighty, it's another one. And if it's not another one, it's another one. Things just happens all of a sudden. In other words, you don't have to go looking for trouble. Trouble can find you. And it'll find you all of a sudden. Maybe have you been trying so long to hold on to his promises. And you are so tired of straining against the wind, against the circumstance, against the doubts and fears that try to overwhelm you time and time again. And you're wondering, when is it going to stop? And you're looking for a way out of it. Well, I stopped on my way to heaven to bring you good news. Now, I pray you catch this fresh revelation of God's heart of love for you because the Bible says in Mark 6 and 48 that while he was in the mount praying, he saw them tolling and rowing. Wait a minute. He's in the mountain. And if I had a picture to show these mountains, he's a long way up there. But yet he still saw them tolling. And he saw them rowing. Listen, for the winds that was going on in their lives at that time was contrary, and the scripture said they were afraid. But yet, while they was doing all that roaring and toying, God saw them. Let me help somebody this morning. One, don't you know that God sees all your troubles before troubles see you? He knows 
your thoughts afar off. He knows all about you. Before your trouble come to you, he done already looked at it. I already know all about it. But I keep trying to tell you, it don't come to destroy you, but it comes to make you. Yeah. Preach, Kevin, preach. Come on, come on now. Come on now. Yeah. And two, not only does he see them, uh -huh. he knows all about them. Uh -huh. yes, he knows what they're about, what you're about to go through, uh -huh. the unspoken burdens getting ready to overtake you before it comes to you. Now, don't miss this because in the fourth watch, now, you know, that's the darkest time. Just before the sun comes up, the darkest hour, the fourth watch of the night. This is what happened. He sees it. Jesus went. Jesus went. Jesus went. To the disciples walking, walking on the sea. Matthew 14, 25. In other words, Jesus went to them and not them to him. He came walking on the very waves that had been tossing them about. Oh, good God Almighty, you didn't catch that. The same sea, the same waves that was causing them to rumble and tumble up in that boat, he comes walking on top of it. And just as he went to them in the darkest time, he will come to you walking on top of your sudden waves too. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. He'll come walking on your troubles. He'll come walking on your anxiety. He'll come walking on your bills. He'll come walking on your heartaches and pain. He'll come walking on your sickness. He'll come walking on top of your regret. He'll come walking on your failures that come against you in the darkest moment of your hour. And when he comes, he says, be of good cheer. It is I. Don't be afraid. He comes to you when you're in trouble. In the middle. At the darkest time. When, when if you call somebody, they can't help you. If you look for somebody to help you, they won't come. When you need somebody to help you, they're not there. But he comes to you yeah. in the darkest hour of your trial, mm -hmm. in the middle. And in other words, he says, I am that I am. Don't be afraid. I am all that you need. And the problem that we have is that everybody is calling on everybody else except for God. Our young folks calling on themselves. Oh, preach, Kevin, preach. This young, this young generation is in trouble. Don't want to listen. Don't want to mind. Can't tell them nothing. Think they know it all. Think they invincible. Think they'll never die, but I come to tell you that there's death after life, there's life after death. You're not invincible. And if it were not for the Lord on your side, a lot of you be in your graves right today and wondering, how did I get myself here? I'm going to cry loud and spare not. He says, I'm all you need. The Bible says here, he has put all things, watch this. He has put all things 
under his feet. In Ephesians 1 and 22, in other words, he's put all your trials, all your troubles, all your distress, your anxiety, all your bills and everything that come against you, they are under his feet. Come what may, he is greater than whatever comes your way. Don't you know God is greater than your situation? He's greater than your trial. There is no situation greater than his power. And that's his power divine. There is no, listen, it, when you get in trouble, don't you know God can pull you right out of it if he wants to? But I keep telling you, why would God deliver you from a situation without first a situation having had his ministry in your life? The situation comes to make you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It don't come to break you. Yeah, listen, I know it's tough. But boy, when you really go through it, you It gets you ready for the next situation around the corner. Yes, sir. Because you're either going in a storm, in a storm, or coming out of a storm. Long as Peter eyes was on Jesus, watch this, he did the supernatural. He did. Long as his eyes was on Jesus, he walked on top of water. Just as Jesus did. When he put his faith and trust in him and asked God, he stepped out on faith and walked uh -huh. on water. Yes, in like manner, as long as you that's watching, as long as you in here, keep your eyes on Jesus, you will be like as he is. Walking on top of your situation. Yes, and that's the problem. We have let our situation engulf us uh -huh. rather than us put being in charge and on top of our situation. However, there is a flip side. And I'm almost done. Because when Peter took his eyes off of Jesus and started looking at the wind, started looking at the waves, started looking at the lightning, when he took his eyes off of Jesus and he put his eyes on the boisterous wind, he started to sink. Matthew 14 and 30. And I come to tell you this morning that it is so easy to get caught up in your storm to the point that you will keep looking at your storm instead of looking at the one who calms the storm. You're so busy, you can't see the forest for the trees. You can't see deliverance because you're so caught up in what you're going through. And rather than calling on his name, you call on everybody else except for that name. And that's Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Now the good news is, when Peter falls, he was, watch this, he was in arm's reach. Peter didn't fall 10 yards away. He didn't fall 5 yards away from Jesus. He fell within arm's reach of Jesus because the Bible says, and immediately, if you look at it, oh, you don't hear me. If you look at the Bible, if you look at the, what the scripture said, said immediately he stretched forth his hand and caught him. Peter didn't fall way out. Peter fell right when he got to him. Right at the end when all he had to do is just keep his eyes on him for another second or so and he was already there with Jesus. But just, and don't that happen to us? And just as he was in arms reach of Peter, in his arms reached out, 
into your sudden storm so you don't have to go looking for Jesus. In other words, when you fall in the midst of your storm or in the middle, you don't have to go looking for him where he's already at. He's right there in arm's reach. He is already there because he came to you before you called on him. Before you call on him, he's already there ready in arm's reach. In other words, you don't always have to go to God. He will come to you. Ain't that, ain't that what we do when our children get in trouble? If they don't call us, all we got to do here is what? Cry. A whimper. And what do we do? We run right to him. And that's the way the Lord does with us. When we cry, before we even cry his name, he's already there. With his arms already stretched out. And two, he will immediately catch you before you fall. That's why some of you ain't lost your mind. I didn't get too many amens. That's why you ain't dead. That's why you ain't in a crazy house. Because he caught you before you fell. And that's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13 and 10 and 13 that he will not put more on you then you can bear. Listen, you may take your eyes off of Jesus, but Jesus would never take his eyes off of you. Preach, Kathy, preach. You may take your eyes off of Jesus, but Jesus would never, ever, ever take his eyes off of you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll be with you even to the end of the world. And as I close, I pray that you will keep your eyes open to see Jesus even in your sudden darkest hour. He is your very present help in the time of trouble. Listen, but you don't have to allow him you don't have to allow him into your life. Just like disciples who were willingly receive him into their boat. They willingly now, they willingly receive Jesus into the boat. And immediately found themselves at their destination. When we start allowing Jesus and receiving him immediately where we at, that's when the waves going to stop. That's when the storm going to get calm. That's when your troubles are going to go away because trouble don't always last. When you immediately receive him, that's when your troubles go away. And as you invite him into your situation, I'm believing with you for your breakthrough to happen supernaturally. Wherever you're at, wherever you're listening, Jesus is right there. And not only is he in arm's reach, but they're stretched out. Why? Why? Because somebody today is blind. Somebody today don't know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Somebody today has not accepted Jesus into their life. Listen to me. Baptism does not save you. I don't care how many times you've been baptized. The scripture plainly lets us know that he that believeth and baptized shall be saved. Watch this. But he that believeth not shall be damned. So that says, 
Baptism can't save you. You got to believe. You must be, got to be, have to be born again. Otherwise, Jesus said, you will not enter the kingdom of God. And that means you ain't got to run up and down and jump and shout and holler and scream. And all you got to do is believe. John 3.16 said, God so loved the world. And whosoever believed shall not perish but have what? Everlasting life. All you have to do today is believe. Man, woman, boy, girl that don't know who Jesus is, all you got to do today is believe. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And the Bible says, Thou shall be saved. It's about belief. And look, it's not believing in anything. It's about believing in him. The one that died for you. The one that gave his life. That you might go free. He took your place. He took mine. He took everyone's in her place. Because you know why? We deserve to go to hell. But he took your place. Thank you, Jesus. So that you don't have to go to hell. That you can be with God for eternity. Forever and ever and ever and ever. And ever. That might be one here. Come on, Charles, give me something. That might be one here. This is your opportunity to come to know who Jesus is. Will you come? If you don't know him. Though the storms keep on raging in my life. So the storms rage. And sometimes it's hard to Will tell you the night from day. Still that hope that lies within is reassured as I keep my eyes upon the distant shore. I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But he the storms don't cease, and just in case, just in case, the winds they keep on blowing in my life. My soul has been. What is been? But in the word of God, I've got got an anchor, and it keeps me steadfast and unmovable, despise the times, but if the storms don't cease, Just in case, just in case, the winds they keep on blowing in my life. My soul has my been anchored in, in the Lord, in the Lord. Us may roll, uh-huh. break us, us may dash. 
I should not sway because they hold me so, so fast. fast. Though dark the days, what? the clouds in the sky, I know it's all right because Jesus is nigh and my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul, my, 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 soul's been anchored. My soul's been anchored. My soul's been anchored. My soul's been anchored. A bill of Breakers may dash. I should not sway because they hold me so fast. Though dark the days, the clouds in the sky, I know it's all right because Jesus is nigh and my soul. Bless God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with each and every one of you, his now and forever. And all of God's children said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. In about five minutes, we're going to come back on and do the Lord's Supper with you in about five to ten minutes. In Jesus' name, Amen. Come on and give God some praise. We'll see you back in a few minutes, St. Elmo, online. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. Now, amen. if you would prepare your heart for the Lord's Supper. Amen, 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 amen. And the word reads, And on the day of the unleavened bread came on which the Passover must be sacrificed. And he sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make ready for us the Passover that we may eat. And he said unto him, where wilt thou go that we make ready? And he said unto them, Behold, when you enter into the city, there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house whereunto he goeth. And you shall see unto the master of the house. The teacher said unto me, Where is the guest chamber? Where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples. And he will show you with the large upper room furnished. There make ready. And he went and found, as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour had come, he sat down and the apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not eat it until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he reached, received a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it amongst themselves. For I say unto you, I shall not drink from henceforth of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it. And give to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me in, rem in the manner of the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, even that which is poured out for you. But behold, the hand of him that betrayeth me is with me on the ta at the table. For the Son of Man indeed goeth, as he hath been determined, but woe unto them, though whom he is betrayed. We're now in the hands of the urshers. As immediately after you receive it, would you go ahead on prepared, please?
Amen. We now come to observe the ordinance of the Lord's Supper, given to us to celebrate in his memory of his broken body and his shed blood. It is said that on the night before the betrayal, the conclusion of the faith of the Passover, which he and his disciples were celebrating, he took the bread and having blessed it and break it, he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body which is given unto you. Father, thank you for the bread of life. This is not the bread that our ancestors ate in the wilderness in Paris, but he who ever eat this bread have everlasting life. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Thank God and amen. 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 And on the same night, he took the cup and having blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, This is my blood which is shed for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary so that we might have life today, Father God. For we know without the remission of the blood, there could be no sin, Father. Thank you. And according to the law, I may also say all things are cleansed with blood. And apart from the shedding of blood, there can be no remission of sin. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we fellowship with one another in the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, you complain, proclaim the coming of the Lord until his death. Let us eat. Let us drink and all of drink it. The wine so we can have sweet communion. So eat the bread. Basket down. And drink the wine. So we can have. It is said that as they sang him and went out into the man of all, and since we do have, not have a man of all, let us fellowship with one another, and may God bless you and may God keep you as we sing, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, oh yeah, I died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. Come on, church. They whipped him all night long. Oh yeah, they whipped him all night long. Yes, they did. They whipped him all night long. For me, yeah. One day when I was lost, come on, Mr. Will, come on. He died upon the cross. Yes, he did. I know. I know it was, was the blood. The blood for me, you, and everybody else. Yeah. Amen. 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 He's coming back. That's the good again. part. That's the good part. He's coming back. Yes, he again. is. He's coming back again for me. Yeah. Oh, one day when I was lost. Yes, Lord. He died, he died up on the cross. The cross. I know it was the blood. It was the blood. It was the blood. Me. Amen. May we stand, please. God bless you all. God bless you all. May you raise your hat right hand, please. May the sweet communion of your faith rest root and out in each and every one of you until we meet again. And all of God's children said, Amen. In Amen.